So the typical conversations surrounding aspartame usually involve some really intense and confusing conversations about the effects of aspartame on obesity levels and insulin resistance and cancer and the gut microbiome. However, that is not what this video is going to be about. I'm going to leave that conversation to the birds and focus on what I find more interesting, which is the possible effects of aspartame on testicular function, testosterone production, as well as fertility. Now, in this study in particular that I'm going to focus on throughout the duration of this video uh, that was published back in 2020, uh, the researchers did find that varying doses of aspartame could have a very notable impact on testicular health, oxidative stress, as well as as testosterone production and pretty much every marker of fertility that they measured in this study in rodents. Now, I know a ton of you at this point are probably thinking to yourself, well, if this is only performed in rodents, that this study is completely irrelevant and this video is completely irrelevant. However, this is absolutely not the case and let me explain why. Now, in the online evidence-based community, we always like to say that if you're going to be implementing any sort of dietary measure or supplementation protocol or pretty much any lifestyle measure, that you want some sort of good human clinical trial to support the effectiveness of what you're trying to implement. And while this is true when it comes to evaluating various measures that you're trying to implement into your life, this is not always the case when it comes to uh, evaluating various interventions for possible side effects and toxicity. Now, the reason for this is that oftentimes if a compound or intervention of any sort uh, shows some sort of side effect profile or toxicity in rodents in preclinical trials, these types of compounds and interventions often never get to clinical trial status, which means that there often isn't any clinical research into the side effect profiles of various compounds and interventions. Now, the reason for this is that oftentimes if a compound shows a, a side effect profile in uh, rodents and preclinical trials, it's often considered to be an ethical dilemma to purposefully then take that compound and give it to humans for the purpose of seeing if it causes side effects in humans. And because of this, researchers often rely on population level studies and prospective studies and observational studies to assess whether or not a compound is showing toxicity on a population level. However, the issue with this is that oftentimes these types of studies are very inconclusive and is very difficult to uh, assess whether or not something is actually toxic because of the amount of variables that are involved in those types of studies. And because of this, there's often a lot of compounds that just kind of live in limbo where there's preclinical data to support the uh, effects or side effects rather of a specific compound. And then you can't take it to clinical trial. And so because of this, there's really no solid evidence to support the fact that something is actually toxic. Now, I say all this to say that sometimes studies like this one are pretty much the only data points that you have uh, that give you a glimpse into the possible side effects of a compound like aspartame. And uh, the first thing I want to touch on in regards to this study is simply the conclusion of the study where the researchers note that the findings of the study suggest suggests that aspartame due to increased production of free radicals, induction of oxidative stresses, and weakening the antioxidant defense system could induce some disorders related to histoformetric and serum parameters, increasing oxidative and nitrosative stress and downregulating chaperone heat shock protein 72 expression and biosynthesis sperm quality, and histochemical changes in medium and high dose groups of mice. However, the results of the low dose aspartame did not significantly differ from the control group's results and did not show any damages observed in the two other groups. Nonetheless, confirmation of the toxicity of aspartame in the male reproductive system requires more extensive experimental studies as well as clinical trials. Now, the first thing that's worth noting here is that pretty much every single uh, marker of testicular health that was measured in this study in response to aspartame showed a detrimental effect of aspartame on testicular health. Sperm quality, sperm count, testosterone levels, testicular structure, 
and oxidative stress parameters as well. Now, as noted by the authors, this was most apparent in the medium and high dosage groups, but it should be noted that even in the low dosage group, there was still a observable trend towards a reduction in these parameters. For instance, you see a 10 and 26% reduction in testosterone levels in the medium and high dosage groups respectively, but there's still a 6.4% reduction in the low dosage group. And then when it comes to sperm counts, you see a 21% and a 40 4.5% reduction in the medium and high dosage groups, but you also see a 9% reduction in the low dosage groups as well. And then when it comes to DNA damage, you do see a 225% relative increase in the medium dosage group and a 378% uh, relative increase in the high dosage groups, but you also see a 48% relative increase in the low dosage group. And so while the differences between the low dosage group and the control control group sometimes aren't uh, considered to be statistically significant, they are worth noting and do show a trend towards reduction in pretty much all of these parameters. Now, before we go any further here, I do think it's also worth noting what the actual dosages that were used in the study are. However, before we dive into the dosages here, I do want to give a huge shout out to today's video sponsor that doesn't use any aspartame in their product. Element. Now, Element has been a longtime sponsor of this channel for over a year now, and for those of you that aren't aware, Element is a perfectly proportioned electrolyte mix of sodium, potassium, and magnesium that is specifically formulated to help replenish the electrolytes that are lost through sweat. However, one of the reasons I like Element so much is because they have somehow figured out how to create a fantastically tasting product without the use of artificial sweeteners and flavors. And in fact, I will often open up a packet of Element and dump it into my water, not because of the inherent benefits of the electrolytes, but simply because of how good it tastes. And so whether you're looking for something to quench a sweet tooth, or if you're looking for something that has the inherent benefits of an electrolyte supplement, I cannot more highly recommend my friends over at Element. Now they are currently offering you guys a free sample pack of Element with any purchase. And so if you're interested in something like this, uh, make sure to check out the link down below or go to Drink Element element.com slash nutrition library uh, to snag this offer and to support this channel. Now in this study that we've been referencing, the dosages that were used were 40, 80, and 160 milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day in the low, medium, and high dosage groups respectively. Now these numbers probably mean absolutely nothing to you as they meant absolutely nothing to me when I first read this study. However, if we do some very brief calculations, we can calculate the human equivalent dosage for all of these dosages for the average sized uh, adult. And when you do these calculations, what you'll see is that the low dosage group is roughly 227 milligrams of aspartame per day. The medium dosage group is roughly 450 milligrams, while the high dosage group is roughly 908 milligrams of aspartame per day. Now, the reason that these numbers are somewhat alarming is that the average diet soda can contains roughly 100 to 250 milligrams of aspartame, which means that only one to two cans of uh, diet soda can put you in that low to medium category of aspartame consumption. Now, just to reiterate, this level of aspartame intake is roughly equal to a 6 to 10% reduction in testosterone, a 9 to 21% reduction in sperm count, and a 48 to 225% relative increase in DNA damage. And so even when you account for the dosages of aspartame that were used in this study and compare them to the typical amounts of aspartame that would be consumed on a regular basis by anyone who is consuming some sort of diet soda, it is very clear that it's very possible to experience some of the negative downsides and the side effects associated with this level of aspartame intake. And then on top of all of this, this exact same dosage of aspartame in other rodent trials has showed not just oxidative stress in the testes, but also in the body of rodents, the brain, the heart, 
the kidney and in the liver. Now, I'm really trying my best here not to be a fear monger. That is not my intent whatsoever. However, it is fairly clear from at least this evidence that there does appear to be some level of oxidative stress associated with the intake of aspartame. Now, it's not exactly clear exactly why aspartame appears to be an oxidative agent in various tissues in rodents. However, the leading theory is uh, related to the actual molecular structure of aspartame. Aspartame is what's known as a dipeptide that is composed of the amino acids phenylalanine, aspartic acid, and then is linked together by a methyl ester group. Now, the reason this is important to note here is that the methyl ester group that is found in aspartame when ingested is directly metabolized into a molecule known as methanol. Now, for those of you that aren't super familiar with methanol, methanol is a very, very well-documented poison. Now, um, uh, to be fair, the dosage does make the poison here, so I do think it is worth talking about the dosage of methanol that you would get from aspartame. And the first thing that we have to note here is that the average uh, level of aspartame that's found in an average uh, can of diet soda is around uh, 250 uh, milligrams. That's the dosage of aspartame. And this is roughly equivalent to about uh, 22 milligrams of methanol. Now, this number may not make any sense to you either until you consider the fact that the uh, reference intake set by the EPA for methanol is only 30 five milligrams per day for the average sized adult, which means that only two cans of diet soda per day sets you over the limit of the reference intake above which you would expect to experience some level of side effects in certain situations. Now, to give credit to the EPA, they usually do provide some level of buffer here to ensure that uh, people aren't consuming too much of a compound that uh, causes some level of harm to them. However, it does give some legitimacy to the possibility that uh, aspartame could be causing oxidative stress in specific tissues secondarily to its methanol content. Now, again, there isn't any hardcore clinical data to support the notion that, uh, that aspartame can lower testosterone levels and decrease uh, a testicular function. However, the truth is we just simply don't know and likely never will know. And so um, this is just something to be aware of when considering the uh, possible negative side effects of something uh, that seems to be benign like aspartame. Now, the proponents of aspartame that tend to defend the safety of aspartame, which um, I think is a really we weird hill to die on if you ask me, but uh, a lot of the proponents usually will bring up something along the lines of, well, diet sodas are better for you than regular sodas. And uh, my response to that is usually something along the lines of, well, so freaking what? The question here is not, is aspartame better for you than sugar? Uh, the question here is, is aspartame healthy? Is it safe? Is it good to consume on a regular basis? Is it going to cause any detrimental effects? And to be quite frank, the answer to those questions right now is we simply do not know. And when you don't know something, it's usually better to err on the side of caution than liberality. But that's all I have for this video, guys. If you have any questions or scathing remarks, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Uh, but also make sure to check out the links down there for um, a free sample pack of Element, as well as a link to get your uh, your testosterone checked at home. If you're curious about your testosterone levels, there's also going to be a link down there for that. But other than that, I think I will see you guys next time.